Hi there, welcome to No Not Just Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and if this is your first time on the channel, please do consider subscribing. I put out new content every Thursday, reviews and videos just like this. For this specific episode, I'm gonna be looking at the London Whiskey Show by the Whiskey Exchange. Uh, their big, massive show, like 650 whiskies on show, is absolutely insane. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a trade pass this year, so I went down for free on the Monday, which was after the general consumers on the uh, Saturday and Sunday and got to chat with a lot of people that I know, some of the ambassadors, and try what's new and what I haven't tried before. It, absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna go through these things one by one that I tried uh, and what I thought of them. So we got down there pretty early, dead on the 11 o'clock. That's uh, me, Gentleman Grim, and two thirds of the Dead Bottle Collective. Absolutely brilliant bloggers, do check them out, I'll put some links below. And uh, we went straight in there. And first thing that I wanted to go for was the Buffalo's Trace Antique Collection. But unfortunately they'd all gone already, uh, everyone on the Saturday and Sunday had already tried it. So while I was there, I tried the 1792 single barrel, which was absolutely incredible. I understand it's pretty much sold out now, uh, difficult to get hold of in the UK anyway, which is a real shame because that was real class that. Surprisingly enough, the next thing I tried was the Jack Daniels single barrel. It's been something I've been meaning to try for a while, but I've been putting off. It's quite expensive considering, um, it's like maybe 42 pounds but uh, I uh, am not the biggest fan of the Jack Daniels flavour so I've been putting off trying it and I thought well, why not while I'm here and it's surprisingly good I couldn't believe how good it was and it's kind of opened my eyes a little bit that maybe I should be giving Jack Daniels a bit more of a chance just because I uh, fell out of love with them when I was a young lad and uh, drinking their number seven but it uh, doesn't mean that I can't like them now so I will be trying more stuff and I'm going to try and get some stuff and put it on the channel in the future okay after that we went to go and see the uh, Gordon McFarl stand See my uh, good friend Ben Bowers, who also does a YouTube channel, uh, Drama Day, and he's sort of doing his little 500 thing. And um, he introduced us to something that was absolutely incredible, the Highland Park 1990. Now this thing was absolutely stunning. And we sat there and talked to him a bit. It's about 120 odd pounds, which is a ridiculous, ridiculous price for such a, a, an aged whiskey. Especially at Highland Park, because we all know Highland Park are quite expensive. They certainly wouldn't be selling this for the same price that G&M are selling it for. Uh, and I can honestly say it's definitely, if you're even a little bit into Highland Park, it's definitely worth it. Subtle smoke, all the things you expect from Highland Park, but just bottled at a reasonable price. Straight after that, I went to take my friend, Gentleman Grim, down to the Few stand. They brought to just a couple of their bottles, and I wanted him to try the British Bourbon Society Few, which they had on the counter sneakily. And I thought, why not? We've got to try that. Uh, I took him down there, and I, I hadn't intended to try any, so I thought I'd tried them all, but then I noticed they had their malt whiskey. I've got to try that malt whiskey. So I had a little sip of the malt whiskey and I couldn't believe the smells and the flavours that came off it. It was like fresh, freshly cut hay or straw, or something like you know, hay bales out into the field. And I'm I'm a rural boy myself, so it it really reminded me of my childhood. Uh, a couple of other people that were there weren't too keen on it, so I can imagine it divides the field quite neatly. But for me, it was uh, such a kind of nostalgic smell. The, I just thought it was absolutely fantastic and definitely worth a try. The, the, so the bottles are relatively expensive, but this is a craft distillery. They uh, they need to do this to, to survive, so it, it's it's worth having a go. Try um, Master Malt samples or something similar to that. If you're not sure, I definitely recommend giving a few a go. So next we went to check out the uh, Glen Goyne distillery, and I couldn't believe what they had in store. They had some great stuff there. I'm a big fan of their cask strengths, and I'm a big fan of their 10-year but uh, I tried the 21 and the 25. Now I have to say the 21 is absolutely fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that at all. For me, the 25 had some sulfur in it, um, which I'm a little bit disappointed about. I did think it was gonna be incredible, but uh, I understand that I'm also one of the very few people that really gets put off by sulfur. So don't let that sway you in any way. Um, there are a lot of people out there that think it's amazing. For me, not so much. Straight after that, we went to have a look at Glen Farkless. Now I am also a big fan of those, so I had to try it. I've, got, I've tried like the, the 10, the 15, the 105 is absolutely amazing. And there they had the 25 and the 30 on free pour. Uh, I had to try these things, They were, and both of them, both of them were absolutely stunning, completely stunning. Very expensive, but stunning. After that I thought, well while I'm here I'll try the, uh, the 5, 5, 11 pounds and some shillings thing. Uh, I'd heard some, some stories about it, maybe it wasn't so good. For me, heavily sulfured. Not a nice flavour, I have to admit. And it's not something that I would like to say usually because Glenflarkus really are a good distillery and they make some amazing stuff. 
That one there for me, I don't know what they chose differently, but the sulfur in it was just too overpowering and it, it's not one for me. Now, something that was very important for me to try and I was surprised, I didn't see it on the counter to start with, but um, I went to the Glenfiddich stand and I saw Ambassador Mark Thompson there uh, and I asked him if he had any more of the Winter Storm left hidden under the counter and he did. And he let me and my friends try that. It's, re it's really good, I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie. It's the uh, Ice Wine Finish 21 year their brand new experimental series number three. It's really quite expensive, 200 pounds. For my money, I wouldn't buy that, but it is good. It is good and it is worth a purchase if you have the money and you're into that sort of thing. But it's definitely worth trying if you can get it, if you can get a sample of it or something like that. It's, it's interesting and it's quite nice. While we were there as well, he gave us something really special, which was quite surprising. It was a, an unmarked bottle with just a label on it, that's it. Uh, no branding, nothing, unreleased, they're not even sure if they're going to do it yet, but it was a 25-year Glenfiddich that had 13 years rum finish. 13 years, which is absolutely insane. All right, now it's time for the uh, biggest disappointment of the show. For me, I'd heard great things about the, the uh, previous edition, the Macallan Edition 2, but I don't know, so I went to try the Macallan Edition 3. It's the first one I've tried, I haven't tried the 2 yet, I do have a sample that I'm going to try on the channel soon enough. So I went for the 3, but for me again, it's so much sulfur it's unbelievable even people that i was with who don't usually get sulfur got just a touch of it not enough to put them off too much i don't think but for me absolutely ruined with sulfur not recommended in any way if you even remotely taste sulfur but um, again i always i would never say don't buy it people love it and i've seen people already reviewing it scotch test dummies have reviewed it and uh, they quite like it for me it's a no-go okay let's talk about some standouts then now, some of the surprises for me were actually some of the smaller ones, the smaller new distilleries and things like that. So there was the Starwood distillery um, who had their normal single malt spirit, which is nice. You know, there's nothing wrong with it at all. I quite like it. But they also had this two and a bit year X red wine cask um, going that they've just started selling in the UK. That thing, let me tell you, is absolutely incredible. If they'd have put it in front of me and not told me I'd, it'd been aged for me, that's all I can say. I urge you to go and check them out because Starwood are absolutely brilliant. The next one, of course, is the Cotswolds Distillery. Now, if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you know I've covered a little bit of the, of the Cotswolds. They're my local distillery, and uh, I cannot wait for their three-year spirit to be properly released. That's coming up next week, actually. While I was there, I had to try it, and I went and met the uh, founder, Dan, who's a lovely chap, and a few of the other people who work at the distillery, absolutely wonderful people. I cannot believe that it's only three years and a day old, but that whiskey is really, really good. I, just, I don't know how to convey that. If, if you've only just heard of them through this channel, then please do check them out, buy a bottle. While we were down there around by the stands with the small bits, we also tried the Bren French whiskey, 40%, no age statement. It was interesting, had some different flavours to it, some kind of candies and things like that. But um, for me, I would be more interested to try their 10 year when it's released very soon. Next, we went to the Kings County and uh, these guys, they produce these little bottles, 200 mil bottles, uh, relatively expensive for the size. They're about uh, 30 odd pounds. I've tried quite a few of their stuff before, like the peated bourbon. But this time around, I wanted to try their bottle and bond and their barrel strength bourbon. And let me tell you, that barrel strength bourbon is like, it's like 63%, it's super strong, uh, absolutely stunning. You could water it down and make pretty much a full bottle, I guess. But why not? Uh, give it a go. Um, they are small bottles for sure, but they are definitely worth trying and they're making some incredible stuff. Something amazing I got to try while I was there as well was the uh, the brand new Michter's Toasted Rye, Toasted Finish Rye. I don't know what the price is going to be yet, I don't know when it's going to release in the UK. If you see a bottle of it, you're going to have to get it because it's so limited in the UK, it'll just fly off. Okay, we're on the finishing straight now. Now we're gonna go into some slightly interesting ones, a bit of weird ones. Um, we went to the, see uh, Billy Abbott at the Show Bottlings one. The first one we saw was the Bunnerhaven, 1989. That was an exclusive to the, uh, the Whiskey Exchange and the Whiskey Agency bottling. Now that thing, I mean, it must be like 27 years old. I dread to think how much it was, probably 200 pound. Absolutely sublime. I cannot believe how nice that whiskey was. Uh, if you can get hold of it, definitely give it a go. And while I was there as well, I tried a Kalila Seven Years, which was part of the Art of Whiskey, where they did kind of um, artwork on the bottlings. Also very good. You can tell that I'm coming to the end of the show, uh, the end of the whiskey show, and uh, I started drinking the peaty stuff. And I was just absolutely loving it. Straight after that, we went to have a look at Brooklady. I was going to try the local barley, but I ended up getting sideways, and we tried the Octomore 8.1 and the 8.3. Uh, for me, the 8.1 wins it. Only just, 
but it does. Uh, and while we were there, we were lucky enough to have the Black Art, which is stunning. There's no way about it, it's absolutely stunning. I wish I could get hold of it. It's really quite expensive, so I probably won't be buying a bottle anytime soon, but I am super glad I got to try that. Last but not least then, I went down to see Shilton Almeida at the Paul John stand. We tried a couple of the normal stuff, some things I've had before, like the Brilliance and the Peated, and then out of nowhere he produces a bottle of the 686 numbered cask, which is sold out, and let me tell you, that thing is awesome. It's, um, it's not too heavily peated, but it's peated just perfectly, aged perfectly. I wish I could get a bottle of it, because I'd never even heard of this thing, and he's like, yeah, try this. Absolutely incredible. Big thanks to Shilton for letting me try that, and I, I hope that I can try more like that in the future. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed me counting down the things that are there. They had some amazing stuff. I didn't get to try nearly as much of it as I'd like to. I tried too much as it was. Didn't spit any of it out. Apart from the Macallan 3, that had to go down the spittoon. Not a big fan of that at all. The only disappointment I've got from the entire day was that I didn't manage to track down the Lot 40 Canadian, and I promised myself I would try. And I went there three times, and every time I did it, they took it off for a masterclass somewhere, and I just couldn't get hold of the damn thing. So I will get around to trying it one day, but uh, unfortunately not this time. There you go. Thanks for joining me for that rundown of the whiskey show. Hope you enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe to the video, and do check out some other stuff on uh, the, the channel. Thank you very much.